This is Craig Haugard with your Financial Issues Ag Update. The corn followed the crude oil and stock markets higher yesterday. The corn market is oversold, but there really isn't any other fundamental reason for corn to rally at this point, especially given the fact that the ethanol industry continues to see plants slow down with rumors of plants shutting down. Basis levels around the United States seem to have leveled off after seeing drastic drops last week. Looking ahead, they're still projecting that we're going to see a lot of corn acres planted this spring, and if you combine that with a projected carryout that keeps getting bigger, it's hard to find any traders that are currently real bullish corn. As I record this, however, the overnight spot corn futures are trading three cents higher. The soybean market was down early yesterday, but managed to close a couple of cents higher. In spite of rumors of port closures in Brazil and Argentina, those nations continue to ship beans at a rapid pace. Month to date, Brazil has shipped 7.2 million metric tons of soybeans. Last month, they shipped a total of 8.5 million for the entire month. Right now, they're on pace to exceed both 2018 and 2019 levels. With yesterday's close, soybeans from the U.S. now work into China for $3 per metric ton less than Brazilian beans, so hopefully that'll translate into some export business. In the overnight trade, spot soybean futures are trading up three cents. We traded both sides of the market yesterday, with Kansas City and Chicago finishing within a couple cents of unchanged, while Minneapolis was roughly a nickel higher. This week, we have seen both Russia and Kazakhstan ban some grain exports in order to shore up their food supplies. Weather will continue to be a big factor in the grain market, so it was interesting to hear reports of possible freeze damage in Ukraine with temperatures in that nation's northern and central winter wheat regions uh, dipping down to 23 degrees Fahrenheit on two consecutive evenings earlier this week. Here in the U.S., we have seen crop conditions improve uh, for hard red winter wheat as the weather has remained beneficial. In the overnight trade, Chicago is four cents higher, Kansas City is up a penny, and Minneapolis is two higher. Cotton futures had a good outing yesterday, with the May futures uh, went up and filled the gap that had been left by Monday's action and then maintained much of those gains as they closed up 74 points to settle at 52.89. In the overnight trade spot, futures are trading an additional 122 points higher. Livestock markets were all sharply higher, driven by strong domestic demand. June live cattle futures were up $4.50, which was the expanded limit, while the May feeder cattle futures closed up their expanded limit of $6.75. They'll both be operating with expanded limits yet again today. Lean hog futures had a good session as well, with the June futures closing $2.05 higher. Class 3 milk futures were unchanged in the April month, uh, settling at $16.08, while the more deferred months were a little bit lower. Well, the recent up moves in the cash livestock markets uh, were nowhere to be seen yesterday. Uh, choice beef boxes were a dollar and a penny lower, closing at two fifty six thirty one. dollars well, while selects were $0.34 cents higher as they settled at two forty five forty eight. dollars Pork carcass values were $1.46 lower as they closed at $82.05 per hundredweight. This has been Craig Haugard with your Financial Issues Ag Update. We'll be right back with more financial issues after this.